And this bad boy can fit so much spaghetti in it. For the past month or so, this meme has been making the guys over at me IRL feel important. But now that this meme's popularity has died down, why not take the selling point seriously? How much spaghetti could fit in that car? And for that matter, how would you go about preparing it? Let's find out. First, we need to figure out the make and model of the car in question. Know your meme sites at Mir Gucci as the creator of the quote image pair, so I DM'd him on Twitter. He saw it, but he didn't respond. <clears throat> so I had to dig a bit deeper. As I was scouring through variations of this meme, I realized that Mir didn't make this drawing at all. It was posted to the website Your Mechanic back in 2016. Since this image is two years old without any kind of artist credit on the page, I'm okay with calling that a dead lead. But now what? A quick image search of silver cars gives us the 2016 Audi A4, which is able to both match general appearance and be out around the time that the drawing was made. So unless the artist comes out and explicitly states the car they used for reference, I think that this is close enough. But now we run into another problem, mainly that I don't have the car readily available to test out its interior volume. Not to mention, any method that I can think of to measure volume involves either filling with or submerging in water, which I don't think the owners would be too keen on. Fortunately, there was one lonely person who actually made a 3D model of the A4, interior detailing included. Now, I'm not too good in Blender, so instead of creating a detailed model of the airspace inside the cabin, I just figured out an approximate volume of the entire car, and then subtracted that from the volume of all the solids used in the model. This gives us a rough estimate of how much room there is in the cabin, as well as in the trunk, under the hood, in the exhaust pipe, etc. So what do we come up with? 82,440 cubic units. Yeah, we're gonna need to come up with a conversion for that. Now, what on this car is both easily measurable and standardized across all different versions of the A4? Wheel diameter? Nope. Steering wheel width? Nah. Exhaust pipes? Nah, that's just desperate. Eventually I gave up and used the reported length of the car to show that one unit is 1.09 inches. Now we need to convert our cubic units to cubic inches by multiplying by that factor. And keep in mind that since we're dealing with units cubed, as this is a measure of volume, we need to apply the factor three times. Then we go from cubic inches to milliliters, and we see that we have about 1.7 million milliliters of space in this car. That's certainly a big number, but maybe a bit too big to grasp. So I made myself the saddest spaghetti possible for science. Turns out that one serving of cooked spaghetti and sauce is a volume of about 275 milliliters. So our car can hold about 6,200 servings of spaghetti, which would cost almost four grand and feed you for a little over a year and a half. It'll all go bad way before then, of course, but at least it'll make for an interesting bath. But before you bathe in that pasta, you'll need to find a way to cook it all. If you wanted a nice warm bath of spaghetti, you'd obviously want it all cooked at once. But with thousands of pounds of pasta, the cheapest way to go about cooking it would be boiling it in a hot spring. That brings about its own problems though, as most hot springs don't actually boil. Rather, they go anywhere from 30 to 70 degrees Celsius, which would lead to rather mushy pasta. The ones that do boil, like the aptly named Boiling Lake in Dominica, contain lots of sulfur compounds, which would give your spaghetti a stench of rotten eggs. Not good eats. But if you really wanted a nasty car full of pasta, you'd better have a helicopter handy, because the only way to get to Boiling Lake is through a three-hour hike described as demanding and strenuous, while seeing such sights as the Valley of Desolation. But if you manage to make it out alive, imagine the stories you could tell your neighbors. Good luck telling those stories to the guys at the EPA, though. They won't be able to hear you through their hazmat suits. 